Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we are talking about Tarleton's master's program in mechanical engineering. We are excited to answer your questions. So as we're going through the presentation, please feel free to put any questions you have in the Q&A box or the chat box, and we will handle those at the end of the presentation. Today, I'm joined by two faculty members from the program, Dr. Lee and Dr. Raj. And at this point, I will just turn things over to them. Hey guys, I'm a mechanical engineering faculty member, and then also I serve as a program coordinator and then graduate program advisor. So when you have some questions about our program, I can answer you. So I will introduce more details later. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Raj Udandam. I'm the department head and associate professor for the Department of Mechanical, Environmental, and Civil Engineering programs. So we offer a little bit about the department. We offer bachelor's programs uh, for mechanical engineering at uh, Stephenville campus and at Willis campus and at Waco campus. For civil engineering, we offer the, the civil engineering program we offer at uh, Stephenville and the Willis campus. Okay, so let's explore the responsibilities of mechanical engineers. The first, uh, they function as innovators in designing and developing, constructing, and testing a broad spectrum of um, mechanical engineering areas. Also, some of the thermal components and systems, as you can see here. So this involves the, the meticulous the creating, uh, crafting of the tools and engines, robots, uh, airplanes, vehicles, and there are lots of different machines, so all customized to meet the project requirement and adhere to budget constraints. So next slide, <clears throat> we will uh, we are looking at the duties and functions of mechanical engineers and the responsibilities. The first, as a mechanical engineers, we design and develop um, mechanical systems and transforming our ideas into reality. And then also we can create diverse range of products from a little tiny gears to complex design of robots. The second also as a mechanical engineer, so we analyze and resolve um, mechanical problems by investigating issues, troubleshooting machines, and identifying opportunities to enhance the performance. Third, uh, mechanical engineers su supervise the manufacturing areas. Also, we testing, we testing processes, uh, ensuring that uh, production meets a precise quality and safety standards for systems. The lastly, mechanical engineers engage in proactively the research and development, exploring on new technologies and enhancing existing ones to push the boundaries of engineering world. So we have the reviews of four major distinct categories within the field of mechanical engineering. And this time, let's talk about there are numerous uh, responsibilities and the roles and the work considering why we are obtained the master's degree is valuable. The first, the most important factor is that the graduate students can enhance their income prospect. That is very important because um, compared to the bachelor's degrees, we can make more notably, we can make more money. Also, according to the uh, BLS uh, data, the master's degree holders report a median annual wage of $112,000. But the other hand, the bachelor's degree holders are on uh, median average of $89,700. So master degree holders can earn an average of $23,000 more. This is very tempting, right? And second, the so graduate students can also elevate their career trajectory. So numerous uh, leadership roles and specialized positions and the research opportunities are often mandate. 
or strongly prefer candidates with master's degrees. Obtaining this, um, obtaining this advanced degree highlights so their expertise and dedication and research capabilities. And third, so they can depend on their specialized knowledge because their master programs provide opportunities for specialization in specific areas, such as robotics, mechatronics, and the energy areas, acquiring in-depth energy expertise in this field enhances their value and opens the door to niche career path. So my, uh, lastly, they can nurture personal growth and satisfaction. For 13 individuals and the intellect, um, intellectual the simulation and personal um, gratification derived from advanced uh, studies and surpass the associated cost and time investments. So mastering integrate uh, engineering concepts and broad broadening their knowledge can be profoundly fulfilling. So next slide, <clears throat> let's uh, review automation requirements and the location of our campuses and uh, some other options. The first, the automation uh, requirements of bachelor's degrees in mechanical engineering or rel related field from an accredited institution is required. Application who don't have this criterion will be evaluated on individually basis. And second, we don't require GRE. So GRE is not mandatory. And also for automation, the minimum GPA of a 2.5 is a, prereq a prerequisite. And third, uh, we offer uh, both thesis, uh, no, this one is more like a, uh, regarding program delivery options. So our program is offered in two different formats, face-to-face -face at Steelville campus and online uh, methods. And students can have flexibility to start the program in either the fall or spring semesters. The last uh, for offering both thesis and non-thesis options. So program provides students with a choice between thesis and non-thesis tracks. The thesis track is considered as an optional for their graduation. So when we see it in detail for our course delivery modes, so our program offers three types of uh, course delivery modes face-to-face -face classes and synchronous online classes, and the last, asynchronous online classes. I want to explain each one. Uh, the first, the in-person course uh, delivery mode is favored by students who prioritize uh, the interactive learning process, particularly this um, in-person course involved in research and pursuing the thesis option that involves a regular advisor meetings. The second one, synchronous online course delivery mode is live ensuring all participants join simultaneously. This mode is particularly beneficial for students located a uh, long distance from Steelville campus who look for interactive learning with more like in, in, instructors. So this mode allows for real-time engagement, enabling students to ask questions and receive uh, responses in a timely manner. The last one, asynchronous online, this uh, course, this uh, delivery mode, uh, provide more like a pre-recorded co content facilitating uh, one-to-many interaction. This option is especially beneficial for students who are not able to attend classes with assigned time schedules. So this allowed students to engage in course through pre-recorded lectures. So if you have, um, if you get admission, you can choose one of them, depends on your circumstances. 
And then especially for international students should take in-person lecture, uh, lecture modes. So next, um, for students for leveling courses, if someone, uh, prospective students having uh, non-engineering degree degrees, they are encouraged in order the leveling courses to bridge the gap, uh, to bridge the gap in the their graduate studies. The program committee members and then program coordinators and advisor will review each case individually, considering the general program requirements along with the specific criteria. So mechanical engineering and mathematics, uh, related mechanical engineering and mathematics and physics, you can see the requirements for mechanical engineering courses and the math and physics as uh, follows. And then, yes, the mechanical engineering requirements. So if you don't have to take those classes, static, thermodynamics, and dynamics, and that, et cetera. And then also for math, math, physics, calculus one, two, three, differential equations, and physics. So uh, if you have a non-engineering degree, so you are recommended for, uh, to take those classes to catch up our graduate studies. And another, if you still are having an engineering degree or relevant engineering degrees, they are eligible to start the first semester without the leveling courses. So they have the um, flexibility to, they have the flexibility to choose between two options, non-thesis and thesis. As you can see here, non-thesis track is more like a professional track. So they don't need to research. They only they take 33 credit hours for coursework. The other hand, thesis track they have to take a 24 credit hours for coursework, especially six courses are core requirements. So that means uh, you have to take a 18 credit hours for your core courses and then six hours for your research thesis. So based on the two different options, you can choose to graduate. So especially next slide, I wanna show you for two different options. If you choose a non-thesis track, you can take at the first semester, you can take uh, advanced solid mechanics and advanced engineering mathematics and advanced engineering thermodynamics. There you can see that is uh, our uh, first, uh, first semester as a place, you should take all of these and then you can move on the next semester, the second semester and third semester and the first semester. You can see here at the last semester, first semester, there are two, uh, um, core courses for graduate, but you can choose one of them, uh, Lean Six Sigma or Advanced Energy System. So the last semester, if we offer both between the Advanced Energy System and Lean Six Sigma, you can choose one of them. So just more like um, uh, non cc track is a more straightforward to take uh, our des uh, design the courses for graduation, but. Um, this is the track, the next slide is for a thesis track. So there are six core courses that so you can see here, advanced solid mechanics as a core uh, course and advanced engineer mathematics is an elective course. So that means if on some math courses are approved by advisors, that means you can transfer some uh, mathematics from other institutes or uh, kind of equivalent courses. The advanced engineering thermodynamics is also a core course. That means you should take this course for graduation. In the second semester, the optimized engineering is a core. The others, uh, advanced heat transfer and the mechanics of this plus as a core courses. So that means you need to take all of these before graduation. In the third semester, you can choose um, you have to take introduction to robotics as a core, but um, computational method for fluid mechanics, or either you can choose either computational uh, method or uh, finite element analysis techniques, uh, finite element analysis course as your elective course. 
to graduate, you need to take a CFIS uh, research course with your advisor. The last semester, you have to choose one course among here, the advanced materials or advanced energy system or Lean Six Sigma. So you have to choose one of them with this research course with your advisor. So if you take a 24 credit hours here with uh, six credit hours for this is research, then you can graduate for this is track. And this is from Dr. Raj. You're muted, Raj. Uh, sorry, I'm going to talk about some opportunities related to graduate assistantships. So these are some opportunities generally we have within the department. Sometimes, uh, Depending on the need, you can be recruited as a graduate assistant non-teaching. For example, uh, in the university, we have a science clinic, math clinic, something like that. So students will be eligible to apply for those things and get uh, a non-teaching position as a graduate assistant. Even for some of the undergrad engineering courses, we recruit the graduate student instructors to teach uh, uh, help with tutoring, all those stuff, and we'll be recruiting uh, students for that. And also we do have like graduate laboratory assistance depending on the need. So currently we have two, two uh, students who are serving as GLAs. So it's an ongoing, once they graduate, we have more uh, positions open up. And also for the graduate teaching assistantship, after a student finishes like a uh, 18 credit hours of coursework, they can, they're they eligible to teach uh, uh, undergrad courses within the department. If we have the opportunities, we're going to recruit for graduate teaching assistant. And uh, several of our faculties do research as well. If there is a research need with the faculty, the student can contact the faculty and they can apply for the graduate research assistantship positions. And uh, these are all the various opportunities uh, we have for the assistantships. In the next slide, we're going to look at like different faculty, mechanical engineering faculty we have in the department. I'm going to briefly talk about each faculty's research area. And then maybe Dr. Lee will add more details as well. So beginning with Dr. Zhu, uh, his research area is in the area of computational fluid dynamics. So currently he's involved in some projects where they're doing some flood analysis for infrastructure or something like that. And Dr. Lee, his research area is mainly towards energy systems. So he's right now dealing with the building a small scale bioreactor and the small scale models of hydrogen fuel cells, something like that. And Dr. Zabi, his research area is in the area of smart materials. So he deals with the uh, civil infrastructures embedded with the uh, shape memory alloys. So to control the cracks and monitor the cracks in civil infrastructure. And also his expertise in the, is in the area of mechanical vibration, like doing analysis for response spectrum for earthquake structures, something like that. And Dr. Du, uh, his area of expertise is in environmental sustainability, and also he's involved in a bioreactor or like biofuel, something like that. And Dr. Alexandru's area is in the area of uh, uh, battery management and computational fluid dynamics. Uh, in the next slide, we're going to open up questions. Before that, Dr. Lee, if you would like to add any of the research areas for the faculty, you can go ahead and do that. You're, you're muted, Dr. Lee. I'm, I'm sorry. So I want to introduce more like our uh, research faculty areas. I mean, the, their research areas. So especially for me, I, um, I have uh, some, uh, industry experience in engines and then power plants, and then the, some of the manufacturing process area. So also uh, Zabi is, uh, his research area is more like smart uh, materials, smart structures, and then um, kind of analyze and 
detect kind of failures using kind of smart materials. So nowadays, kind of smart materials kind of hot topics to uh, research. And Dr. Du, he's also he's uh, working with um, me for kind of uh, developing bioreactor for biomass energy areas. So also his research area is more like uh, sustainability of uh, renewable fuels for transportation. So if someone is interested in more sustainability of renewable energies or like um, agricultural robotic areas, is good for uh, working with him for your research. Also, Dr. Uh, Harasco is he's a very um, very research active kind of faculty. His area is more like um, thermal fluid uh, science, focus on the thermal fluid area, especially um, uh, energy conversion processes, especially for hydrogens and the fuel cells. So also we are planning to hire more faculty members this year. We, we are expecting two more faculty members. So probably um, the two faculty members focus on more like our uh, energy energy systems. And then also we are offering the new kind of program for agricultural and the biological engineering program next year. So if someone is interested in this area, also you can work with uh, new faculty members and with us. So if you guys have uh, some question, please uh, let us know. We can answer you if we can answer you back. <laughs> yes, yes. For our live audience members, please go ahead and use the Q&A box or the chat box to mm -hmm. submit your questions. I see we've got a couple here already. Thank you. Uh, if you've got others, please go ahead and submit those. But I, I'm looking here and admiring all these wonderful pictures. Can you tell us some of the backstory on, on these images we're looking at? All right, so I wanna explain a little bit of the, the photo some photos kind of uh, explanations. The first photo with the uh, four guys with the kind of looks like with a wind turbine with a solar panel. That is their undergraduate capstone project for one year. And then I advise these guys uh, to um, analyze the hybrid energy systems. So that times they analyzed the, our Texas areas for weather conditions and the wind and the light um, kind of radiations. So they designed how they did, did install this kind of application and to maximize energy output. That is uh, three years back. And then all of these guys are working for industry area, especially uh, two electrical guys. They work for a nuclear power plant and then other you know, energy uh, companies. And two guys, I mean, the mechanical engineering students are working for more like a uh, uh, what was that? That kind of a train, kind of freight, kind of uh, cargo designs. So they are working for more like a cargo for um, trains. So also we have aero design teams to attend uh, uh, aero design competitions. So we this is our second. You can see the two airplanes. The purple the top, and then bottom some looks like a pink, but we intended purple, but other different colors. But uh, the yearly, so they attend the aero design competition in the, um, Florida and Texas in Fort Worth. So last year, we we attended our design competition the first time, but we placed in 19 out of 42 something. So, but it was a good achievement. And this time, the last one is kind of the bottom. Uh, we are planned to uh, enter in top, top three, <laughs> we hope. So they are doing good job. And the rest of part, I think Raj, could you explain this kind of a tours? Sure. Uh, the photo with the mask. So it's one of the capstone project. They were analyzing some, uh, uh, presenting their assembly system that they developed. And the one with the rocket, it's a, uh, a NASA rocket competition, where it's an interdisciplinary team where there were like uh, mechanical engineers, uh, even like uh, electrical engineers. The aim of that one is the like they had to launch the rocket uh, for the NASA competition and they had to uh, take a picture such that like 50% uh, is sky and 50% is earth. Based on that, they get scored. 
So every year this competition happens in Huntsville, Alabama. So usually they get a mentor from NASA to launch these rockets in a ranch, something like that, to practice those things. So that's the rocket launch one. And the one next to that one where four students are presenting is another NASA competition. It's called University Nano Satellite Program. In, uh, students went to Albuquerque, where it's like an army base where they got trained on how to design satellite systems and they had to come up with a proposal to uh, submit to the NASA for the competition and they're presenting it at the Albuquerque. And the one where uh, in the middle where the students are wearing hard hats, it's a field trip to the nearby nuclear power plant uh, in Comanche Peak. Very nice. Can I ask how long each of you has been at Tarleton? I have joined this institution since 2017. So that means uh, we, our mechanical engineering program started in 2017. I'm a kind of first member of this, our program. Wonderful. And Dr. Raj? I've started the, here at, in 2015, it's been eight years. Yes, so both of you then have been able to experience a, a very exciting change in that uh, we built a whole brand new engineering building uh, and now it's named after, uh, uh, it's Mayfield. called Mayfield College of Engineering after uh, a very prominent uh, alum and and uh, friend of of the university. What has that uh, new space meant for the program, and how are you enjoying being in a, a fresh, brand new building? Raj, well, so I well, think Dr. Iqbal, I want to little bit talk about Mayfield, Dr. Mayfield. Uh, he's our benefactor, and the College of Engineering is named after Dr. Mayfield, Dwayne Mayfield. So he actually was involved in the design of F-16 A fighters. Mm -hmm. So uh, so he's very well known uh, in uh, like uh, the design of F-16 A fighters. And I'll pass on to Dr. Lee about the lab space. He's so you can see uh, my background. This is our engineering building. And then there's a new brand, the high technology equipment with uh, our you know, equipped with our new um, equipment. And then also, uh, we are planning to, to build a new innovation, innovation innovative uh, research center in 2026. Next, our building, you can see the other side. So in two years, we'll have a new space for research areas. So if you guys come join this, kind of, uh, this uh, program, probably we have a more space for research, but currently we have, as you can see in our department, uh, we have a three major engineering programs, civil engineering and mechanical engineering and environment engineering. But as of this year, we are offering two minors in aerospace engineering and automotive engineering areas. So we plan to kind of expand our kind of minors as a programs in few years. So in 2026, we offer kind of aerospace engineering with the mechanical engineering program as a uh, big, we hope, as a big program. So probably we can uh, accommodate more like uh, engineering students in new space. Very nice. So I want to talk about the academic backgrounds of the people coming into your program. Uh, you mentioned that it's possible for related fields to be admitted, although that's handled on a case-by-case -case basis. So what programs would be good uh, from an academic standpoint to be successful? People who are already engineer, engineering students, who else? So especially you can apply our program, of course, with the engineering degree or without uh, non-engineering degree holders, but if you have been applicants, uh, have a strong academic foundation in engineering field, of course, they can succeed our program. Also, if um, 
they engaged, I mean, they have some professional engineering areas as uh, engineers. It's not, we don't prefer more like mechanical engineers, so kind of a relevant engineering areas, like a civil engineers and structural analysis engineers who are like environmental engineers, because a variety of uh, kind of perspectives are great for our engineering program. So we um, prefer more like a, uh, applica applicants who prepare for their advanced courses. That means that they should have a little strong background um, with a kind of solid understanding of un undergraduate engineering courses and with their passion. So maybe, then, so maybe math majors, physics majors. Actually, the more like uh, someone has a strong background in physics mm. and math courses. That's why when you see our requirements, mechanical engineering requirements and physics and math requirements. So both of them um, equipped, uh, I mean, both of, uh, if you guys have a strong background in both areas, probably it will be good for succeeding our programs. Yes. You mentioned the various formats for studying, the in-person, the uh, synchronous online, and then the asynchronous online. Is every course available in every format? Yes. So we are offering the three different formats, the in-person, synchronous, and asynchronous. So sometimes they prefer uh, in-person, but sometimes they have a time conflict with their uh, schedules. That times they can take uh, synchronous, synchronous online. Or sometimes they have a business trip that they can take our recorded kind of lectures. So anytime they can access uh, either in-person lecture, uh, synchronous lecture, and asynchronous lectures. And so what time are the, the in-person classes happening? What time of day? How many how many days a week? Usually this is the right. I think you need to explain uh, this part. Uh, generally, we try to schedule those courses in the evening times so that it doesn't affect their actual job scenarios. Yes. So then what I'm hearing you say is, there's no barrier for people who may be at a distance from Stephenville or who are working traditional hours during the day. Uh, this program is still available and possible for them. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, we got a question from an audience member uh, who's interested in the thesis track and was wondering, are there any faculty members who are working in additive manufacturing? So actually, it's, uh, this question is kind of close to me because uh, I have a, so my background is more like a manufacturing system. Also, I teach manufacturing processes and the uh, materials for next semester. And then also, I design the many different types of engines and power plant. So it's, nowadays, I'm teaching PEM class too. So one of our projects using the 3D printer. So probably, um, this, if someone asks about this question, please uh, uh, contact me to get more information. Probably I can give you more deep further uh, directions or information. Okay. Um, for a brand new person coming in to the program, I think you'd mentioned that they can start in either the fall semester, which is typically late August, or the spring semester, which is January. Um, is there a specific order that the courses have to be taken in? So actually for taking those uh, courses, we do require the prerequisites. So anytime, if you join spring semester or fall semester, immediately you can start your new semester. So we, uh, anytime you can start your new semester. And then once they start, is there a specific course rotation that they are they are in, or can they pick and choose? So it, take and what there, class? Is a that is a, yeah, right. it is that is right. That is depends on our student demand. If some some student demand more a particular course, that means uh, we collect the our students' voice. 
if they will take a particular course, then we decide we offer that course. Because uh, uh, until now, we don't offer six courses per semester because we have a spring semesters and four semesters, right? For two years. But that depends on students' demands. We offer some courses. So six courses per, per yeah. semester. So mostly we offer courses depends on students' requirements. Okay. Yes. And and are your students enrolled during the summer as well? Raj. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are not offering in summer, but uh, like Dr. Lee mentioned, as we see the need for the student, we are planning to offer them in summer as well. Okay. So right now, just to give an example, for fall 2024, we are planning to offer five courses. So basically, full-time load for a grad student is three courses, nine hours. Yes, yes. An opportunity always to take more courses. Yes. It was exciting to see the number of assistantship opportunities available. How would someone pursue that if they're interested? So generally students get in touch with me. Uh, like uh, for example, right now we have two uh, assistants. They did the same thing like they were, before even they're all the international students before they even like came to the U US. They were in touch with us and we, depending on the need, we were able to talk to them and we look at their profile and the need that we have and then we offer the assistance. Very nice. All right. Well, oh, so sorry. <laughs> um, I was trying to get to our contact information. Bear with me. Oh, goodness. Let's Just see. I entered my email address. To... Yes. Yes. Uh, one that, second. It is the last slide, right? Yes. All right. Um, here's the contact information for Dr. Lee and Dr. Raj. And so if you're interested in any of those assistantships or have any general questions about the program, uh, certainly please do reach out to them. Any final words from either of you or both on why someone might want to consider this program? I did want to ask you um, about the career advancement you've seen in your students or graduates of this program. You mentioned many, many reasons why a master's could uh, help someone improve not only financially, but uh, moving up the ladder career-wise. What have you seen? Oh, uh, actually, they can have a more like a, most important is they can have a high technology kind of skills, and then mm. they have a, obtain a wide spectrum of a kind of knowledge in engineering areas, and then also compared undergraduate level, they can deepen more deep kind of a uh, focused area for their career path, so they can specialize more of their. Uh, professional kind of areas with our higher uh, master degrees. So that is one of our benefits too. And I want to tell you too for this last slide with the last slide. So there, Dr. Raj and Dr. Lee, me. So usually I advise uh, our graduate students for their um, semesters. I mean, what kind of course they need to take, and then if they face a problems. And then I can advise them to figure it out how we resolve the problem. So if you have uh, some uh, graduate programs questions for restorations, automations, and some leveling courses, so please contact me. And then probably I can give you more details later. Also, if you're looking for research areas and then we are not sure which uh, professors or advisors work with, and that times I want to arrange kind of um, meetings with you and our uh, faculty, and then you can work on your research in the future. So Dr. Raj is as a department head, probably he will interest uh, his role for your our graduate program, Raj. 
So maybe le let me add some details, like one of the questions that you were asking, Dr. Ekpo, about uh, what courses they need to have like before they can get into the program. I just want to add some details. So basically, whatever undergrad level uh, program, they learn the breadth of knowledge. So if they're going into deep, uh, they need to have, like if they don't have an engineering degree, they need to have the background of math and physics, like Cal 1, Cal 2, Cal 3, differential equation physics. And also a little bit uh, breadth of knowledge in mechanical engineering. For example, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, something like that, so that they can do well in the master's level, like higher level courses. So... I just want to add those details. So like whenever a student doesn't have a degree in engineering, all they need to do is contact us, we'll uh, evaluate the profile, and then we'll suggest what courses they can take as a leveling courses before they can actually start taking the grad level courses. And are those classes the leveling they would do before they come into the program? Yes, yes. Those are all the like undergrad level courses. Yes. Basic foundation courses. Yes. Uh, that was listed in the slides. Yeah. Very nice. Well, I thank you two so much for your time today and to our live audience members, we appreciate you joining us. The recording of this event will be available on the College of Graduate Studies YouTube channel. So you can uh, look for that if you need to review again uh, what you heard today. And uh, we appreciate you for your interest in Tarleton State University and our mechanical engineering program. It's definitely exciting times for engineering at Tarleton. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, with that, we will end our webinar. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.